Welcome my friend, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode today. Today I want to talk about upgrades to my truck, the repairs that I'm doing, and specifically seats that I'm installing today. I've found my seats. Let's roll the intro and get into it. Currently I'm camped outside of Denver, uh, up in the mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous here perfect weather today and this is a great time to show you all of the upgrades that I'm doing and repairs that I'm doing to my truck. For those of you who had not been watching, my truck was stolen back in May a few months ago and then recovered by the police. The thieves stole the interior and pretty much stripped it out and they put these ugly brown seats in there. So I'm pulling those out today and replacing them. Let me show you what's going on. This is one of the seats, the passenger seat. I've already pulled it out of the truck over here. So you can see these are probably out of like a Ford Ranger or a smaller Ford truck, something like that. They're slightly smaller than my truck, which is an F-350 over here. Looking inside, you can see I've removed that seat here. And you can see that the interior carpet was stripped, a bunch of the plastic pieces were stripped. They cut the steering wheel, they stole the stereo, um, a bunch of stuff like that. So today, uh, what I've done is I'm installing um, this stuff called Kill Mat, and this is an Amazon product. I'll, lim I'll link it below. It's an affiliate link. Uh, but I'm installing that because I've got the carpet out, and this is fairly inexpensive. I think it was like $30 or $40. And so I'm installing that everywhere. It'll quiet things even more, even though this is a fairly quiet vehicle. So putting that everywhere, I've got to put a square under here under the seat. Once I remove the driver's seat, put a square under there, and then install the new seats and the carpet. I should mention that I'm a newbie to all of this. I'm not an auto mechanic, not familiar with a lot of these things. Just reading tutorials online, getting advice from friends, and today I'm doing all of this solo. Uh, I'm going to try to install a carpet kit. have no idea how to do this. There's no instructions with it. I've not even found any videos on YouTube. I haven't looked that hard. So I'm going to place it in there and see if the thing lines up and if I run into any roadblocks. If not, then I may have to put the seat back in until I figure out what to uh, do about this. Here's my carpet kit box here. Inside is the carpet kit. It looks like it does have some insulation over the area of the transmission. So um, I'm going to pull it out and see if I can get this thing installed. I want to mention a couple other things before I put the carpet completely in. Let me show you what's going on with the wiring. I have the carpet just sort of laid out here right now, so I'm going to show you the wiring before I get into finishing the carpet. Originally, the thieves cut this wiring harness here right near the driver's left foot on the front and back here on the back. There's a bunch of wires back here. So I have rewired almost all of this except for four of these wires here. These are black with small blue lines on them and they're all identical there's three on this side and then four over here so there's four of these right here you can see and then i have two other wires that are not wired yet one is green that you can see here and then one is black and these do not go to the back there's no connecting colors on the back side so i think that these were for my power seat so they would have gone from here right up to the middle here and then connect it to the seat. So what I've done is just do a temporary uh, distance here thinking that these go to the power seats. And I've wired everything else together here and it seems like I've fixed like 99% of my electric problems. Power windows are now working, dome light is working, everything else seems to be working. So I just went matching color to color, so orange to orange, gray to gray, brown to brown, uh, just lining up the colors. It was fairly easy to do. Well, I've hit a roadblock. Uh, I've tried to get the carpet kit in here, and it looks as though this was intended for a professional carpet installer in that it's cut a little bit too large for the space. And so I think you're supposed to trim to fit. There's no uh, pre-cut holes for things like these brackets back here in the back that hold the rear bench seat or the uh, mounts for the seats, all the holes where the bolts go in, um, or the area of the contour around the, the 
driver's footrest seat and the passenger seat uh, trimming all around that area. So it looks like this was intended for a professional carpet installer. Um, good thing is that um, I think I've got the funds to do this right. So I think since I don't know what I'm doing here, there's no instructions. I could probably figure it out given enough time. But I think I'm going to pay this next week for a carpet install company to come in and professionally install this, get it fit right, get it trimmed, uh, make sure all the cutouts are correct for all the little pieces like these brackets on the back and the bolts below. So I'm going to hold off on that. I'm just going to roll it up and put it in the back area where the back bench goes. I did not purchase a back bench yet, haven't found that, but I do have the two front seats and the center console. Uh, for now, for temporary, I'm going to put the new front driver's seat in, which will be really nice to have, and then leave everything else out until I can get the carpet installed. That way we only have to unbolt the driver's seat to get this carpet kit in uh, at the carpet install place. So anyway, um, some progress here. One other thing that was completed a few weeks ago when I was in Las Vegas was getting my gauge cluster put in. This gives me my turbo uh, measurements. It gives me the exhaust temperature. It gives me transmission temperature, which is really important for towing a vehicle, at least from what I'm told by my brother and a few other people. So I'm going to roll some footage here of that install. Medardo in Las Vegas who worked on my Dodge truck and did some work on this truck as well. So he's the person who installed this. Many thanks to Medardo for that help on getting these gauges in. He installed the original gauge cluster. So when I was in Vegas getting my title done with the Nevada DMV, um, I just met up with him since he was intimately familiar with how this was all wired and put together. Uh, he went ahead and put the replacement gauges in and they're working great. Over here we have Medardo. You may have seen in previous videos. Medardo originally installed the gauge cluster that goes up this post on the side of my truck and so he's volunteered to come over here today and rewire this which you can see this big mess that he's working on and the heat gun here. Medardo what are you working on? Yeah, just right now reattaching the, the wire or the leads for the tacks or for the gauges to the existing harness that was there and replacing some of the wiring that got torn out from the uh, from when they were trying to steal the, the gauge pods. Unfortunately, whoever stole the pods, they're not going to be able to uh, use them because they tore out all the wiring that goes behind the pods themselves. And they're pretty much useless. So. But at least we'll get these working and they'll be reading your gauges and all your uh, important data that you need when you're hauling. So most of the repairs are just putting new butt collect connectors and splicing in the new gauges. Exactly. But there's a couple of ones that you have to actually have to run completely new cable from up here at the gauge all the way down. And that's what the turbo and the exhaust? The, the exhaust temp wire and the, and the lead for the for the for the turbo because those are well oh, this one for their new one is uh, using a different line and then they trashed the line for or the wire for the exhaust temp sensor since they were yanking on it crazy so you can see where these are the leads that went inside the gauge itself and now it's useless but at least you got all the parts that we needed so we could install everything back to normal so so while Medardo is working on that over there, I am working on the passenger side door over here. This is where they actually broke into the truck. So they punched the lock on this side and then did some damage to the mechanism inside the door. So what they did was they punched in this lock here and it destroyed this handle and some of the mechanism behind. So I have a new lock and a new handle here and this has been reattached on the inside but the uh, power locks on this side no longer work and go up and down so they destroyed the actuator on the inside fortunately that's a very cheap easy to replace part and also the power window mechanism here this switch no longer works for this window to go up and down and for some reason over on the driver's side window 
it's also having problems going up and down so that may be wire short somewhere maybe a fuse something like that but we've got a few other issues to work on so this is just a few things that we're trying to get done uh, I have a stereo to put in here um, I'll probably be end up doing that here in the next week or two that's not going to happen tonight other things I'm doing to help out Medardo is um, reconnecting this turbo here there's a T connector and I installed this before so he could be working in there and I can work out here and this is something with my long arms is easier for me to do let me show you right here are two clamps that go into the hose and I cut this originally and inserted this T insert and this is the old tube and we're replacing this with a new tube and running it inside I have it all cinched down over there then I have zip ties holding it away from the engine compartment going all the way across so I think that it looks good I'm gonna let Medardo give it a final inspection and Medardo has his little headlamp out you probably can't see much but he is putting the gauge cluster back in the corner he's got everything completely rewired and all the gauges look like they're working we did a test before he is actually doing the fitting here and they all turned on uh, we did not run the engine yet but the gauge is all activated and Dardo, what do you think how's it looking uh, it looks good right now we're just getting the panel back in place and in theory it should be this is probably the hardest part i think is fitting this thing in last time it went pretty easy but yeah i think you got it right there perfect yeah. So Looking sure. great. Let's see these things on. Here they turn on. Yep. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. These gauges have a number of colors that you can cycle through. You see Medardo switching through all the colors and you can match them. Um, I'm going to choose actually green, which is the Ford gauge color. So we'll cycle through until we get to the greens and then uh, just let it sit on the green you don't have to actually press in and you have lots of colors to choose from there we go and green there and green there all green gauges looking pretty good great job Minardo. you're welcome i have bolted in just the driver's seat and then i went to put the console in the center and i learned something very interesting let me first show you the new seats that i've purchased well they're used but new to me uh, i think you'll really like these First, let me say that my original truck had seat belts attached to the actual cab itself. So there was an attachment point down here where this gizmo was attached. And then there's an attachment point up at the top. Well, in 2001, which is the year of my truck, they transitioned into a new design that they used in later trucks. So the seat belt is integrated into the actual seat. So it's attached here at the top of the shoulder right near the headrest and then down on the side and then on the seatbelt uh, latch on that side. The previous seats that I had were all power. These are all manual. That's okay with me. I don't necessarily need the power or feel like I even want it. But you can see that the upholstery here is all new. I think these are reupholstered seats. Pretty sure about it. You can see a little bit of wear on the seatbelt here. That's not bad. I'm going to try to make a decision here in the next few weeks after driving this if I want to keep the seat belts that were originally in it or these new ones I think I'll probably use the new ones so anyway uh, the only thing that's really different is this attachment point down here is different in the new set of seats versus the old ones so I've got to either cut this off or figure out what to do with this or get an adapter to attach down here it is bolted in at four points this is a fifth point on the attachment here so this one's not really necessary so i could just cut this off and remove this over here you can see the center console also in extremely good condition really great i just have it sitting in here i realized after i installed the driver's seat that i should have done the console first but that's okay because i still have to put the carpet kit in carpet kits back here i'm looking for an upholstery shop down in the denver area to help me with uh, installing this I want to mention two more things before I close out this episode. One is anti-theft systems. I've installed three items on the truck over here to prevent it being stolen again. Uh, two of these are electronic disconnects and uh, one of them is manual. I have to actually flip a switch every time. 
uh, in order to disconnect the startup routine so that the truck won't start. The second one is automated. I actually have to press a button every time I want to start the truck and every time I turn it off it automatically engages. So that way even if I'm in a rush or I forget I have at least one out of those two that uh, happens automatically. The third item that I've installed in here is a GPS tracking unit. The GPS tracking unit is nice because I can transfer it between the trailer and the truck depending on my situation. So it's very, very small and I have some Velcro and I can attach it in a place that basically nobody would find it unless they knew where to look. The other two items are back here. I installed the toolboxes that I had on my Dodge before I bought the Ford. So I have these here and both of these have locks on them. And until I get a tailgate, I have a new webbing on the back. Not sure if I mentioned that before. So that allows me to carry things in here without them sliding out the back. So that's about it. I still need to get a few things, uh, little plastic parts for the inside, finish up the install, finish installing the stereo system in there. And then let's see, the steering wheel is cut i need to you know put that in and the tailgate and then pretty much i'm back to where i started a few months ago when i bought this truck here is one other thing that i could use your help with and that is the back wall the back cab of my truck i'm not sure what was originally in here and how it was installed so i could really use some help and also i never looked behind the rear bench seat that was there now i have what's called a super cab or an extended cab which has these suicide doors on the back that open the reverse direction and then there was a small bench seat in here that's a little bit shorter than a normal bench seat in the crew cab. And then it was, uh, of course, the backrest was always against his back, and I never folded down to see what was back here. So my question is, it looks like I should have a piece of plastic trim covering this piece here at the top. I see the plastic trim on this side here up against the post over there, and there's one over here on this side. But there's nothing here. And I'm not sure if there's a piece of plastic that goes along the back wall or if the carpet goes up there or how it works. One last thing, this piece was in the vehicle when it was recovered by the police. And I think it's a part of the original truck. You can see that there's some sort of uh, lever thing here on it, like little posts. And I think this was some sort of flap that might have gone on the back. I don't know if it went on the front, on the top, which again leads me to think, that there's supposed to be a piece of plastic up here, some sort of extra trim. So if you know what this is or where it goes, uh, I think it goes back here somewhere. Uh, appreciate some comments. Please write something below. So if you have some feedback for me, some ideas on that or the back wall, please write a comment below. I'd greatly appreciate your help and input. Thanks so much. That's all I have for this episode. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future episode.